to like the news or anything. You can tell they edit stuff so bad just to. And they're looking for it. one thing, right? right? You yeah. know, they're 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 always you know. Um, well, so why are you running for president? Right? right. It's something like that, right? <laughs> and. Um, oh, I had nothing better to do that day. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, one of the things that I saw when I um, was reading a lot of your stuff was that I think it was in 2004 you decided that. Um, you could do this, right? Yeah. Or you could do it. And, um, you know, it's, I don't know that you have $100 million to win, no. the, win the election, no, no, but, no. Um, you know, the, the point is, is that, you know, here's a voice for freedom or a voice for liberty. How do you go about doing that? Right. You know, and I think, you know, when I saw your article in Strike the Root, mm -hmm. oh, he's starting to take off here. You know, there could be a, <laughs> there could be a point here where we might be able to rally yeah. the radicals, so to speak, right? right. And, so then, of course, you wrote me back almost instantaneously that one day that you were right. out of it. Right. Um, and, you know, I just thought it would be interesting to find out why. Why, Ken? Why? Well, the world wants to know why. <laughs> uh, I guess too many things going on in my personal life. Uh, my girlfriend's pregnant, which she's actually due at the end of August. Okay. And so that's like a huge thing. It's taking lots of time. Oh, I uh, had uh, my daughter turns two in August. And no question. You, yeah. are, you have a couple kids already, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So in you've fact, been through my, it. Yeah, my, my son is going to be 20 before this kid's born. Right, right. So <laughs> I have a, a pair of aunts who are younger than me. Uh -huh. Twins. Uh, I hear that people say that. Well, I've got a one of my, well, it's actually one of my mother's cousins, just barely beat his uncle by a couple of months right, right. being born. So a baby on the way in August, so, mm -hmm. any, so it could be any day now at this point, right? It could be. Um, it's due August 30th. Do um, you know the sex? Yeah, it's a girl. Okay. So I was sort of glad about that. Uh -huh. I don't know why. I'm just, well, I guess if it had been a boy, I'd have been glad about that too. So. <laughs> well, I guess I already had a girl's name picked out. I'm not going to say about I that. I guess the other half of that, though, is that if you're running a radical uh, based campaign for, for in the Libertarian Party, one can make the argument we can just go to the bench and get your 30 signatures and make your case and right. go home. Right. right. Um, you know, the, the, the chance of you've actually, you know, you've got all these people, oh, you don't have campaign money or staff or anything along those lines. It's kind of not the point, is it? Right. No, it's not. I, I really didn't like the FEC rules that um, you know, I went to their site and I was looking at all the regulations and everything for filing, and that stuff really was a pain. Um, Having put my wife through that last uh, year in the campaign, right. I can attest to that. Right. Well, I didn't want to have to open another bank account. Well, I didn't want my bank account to be attached to the campaign. Right. Because, you know, I don't, I don't know. I actually was trying to get it set up and let my dad be like my campaign manager and let him have the bank account there where he lives and handle all that. Um, but the more I can think about it, that just, it seemed to be going against what I really set out to do which was to not take any donations, do like a total grassroots sort of thing without, I guess without begging anybody's permission to do it. And the more I got into that stuff, the more it seemed to be directing me away from that. And it's just like, this isn't what I wanted to do. Like, for example, like, what do you mean you, it got away from that? Where, I mean, obviously you're not pulling in 3,000 people right. from Wyoming County here in Pennsylvania right. no, or no. anything like that. Um, I guess it's the whole, well, I don't like begging government permission for anything. And to me, it seemed like the way you've got it set up now, to be an official candidate, you have to go beg their permission, you know, to do all this stuff. You know, I don't see Thomas Jefferson you know, filing with the FEC and having to open a bank account and having all of these regulations and everything hanging over his head. You know, he just, he ran on his ideas and his his friends and contacts. And He was you know. kind of blogging too, right? He wrote the Declaration uh, yeah. of Independence. Oh, right. People <laughs> caught that caught on, right? Yeah, it spread, <laughs> definitely. So I it, just wish people remembered it now. Yeah, yeah, or Constitution. Uh, right? yeah. Um, so you pull back. You say, okay, FEC is not going to be acceptable. Right. The money thing is an issue. Yet, still, Kent for Liberty, write me in for president. I'm still right. writing. Yeah, it. yeah. And it's not like I have any illusions that I'm going to win or anything. You don't plan to be a, a 
1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see myself <laughs> sleeping there anytime soon. <laughs> Not even as an invited guest. Uh, unless Ron Paul ended up in there, maybe. You think you know, you're on his radar, you think? No. <laughs> but he would be the only candidate that might possibly invite me in. But. Um, speaking of which, and it seems to be a popular subject, um, did you notice that Steve Covey has come out and endorsed Ron Paul? What do you think about that? Uh, I guess I kind of agree with him. I, I kind of agree with him on that as far as of all of the Republican or Democrat candidates, he's the one that I would rather see get in there of all of them. I would rather have somebody from the Libertarian Party, definitely. But the way the system's kind of rigged right now, you're basically looking at Republican or Democrat. And for any of those, I mean, Ron Paul is obviously head and shoulders above any of them, even though I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. But You can make a decent case for Mike Gravel or Dennis Kucinich in terms of the war, too, though. Yeah. yeah. Just in those terms. I guess I, I would rather look at more of a larger picture than just war. I mean, because really, you know, the war doesn't really affect me here. And, you know, I mean, it, it's in the back of your mind and all of that, but until Al-Qaeda starts marching through the park and shooting at me, it's it's kind of a, I don't know, it's not a concrete concept. You know? and I do I do have friends who have been over in Iraq and fighting, and I just sort of keep my mouth shut to them about my opinion. Are they all pro for the occupation, if you will? Or? I don't talk to them, not at all. At all, okay. okay. Uh, in fact, one, one friend of mine who was in Iraq is now, I believe, in Arizona working for border control uh, with the National Guard. Uh, so I don't say anything about that either. <laughs> you just kind of keep it on. Uh, I, keep I it haven't on. actually spoken to him since then. I, uh, I've just spoken to some people in his family who kind of keep me up to date. So really, even for you, running for president, it wasn't necessarily about the war. Oh, no. No. I'm... I'm opposed to the war, but that's, it's just part of the bigger picture. I, I just want more freedom for myself and my kids. I can't stand government meddling in every part of our lives. Uh, I don't feel like getting permits and licenses and everything for everything I want to do. I mean, everything you turn around to do, here's another stack of permits or licenses that they want you to do, and that just really irritates me. So why not run for state legislature or something along those lines if you're worried about the regulating mm -hmm. process or the permit process? Is it, is it to make a bigger statement or more categorical, you know? Well, I guess because the main reason I got in was because, you know, the morning after the 2004 election, I was just really in a bad mood because Badnera could but come in so low. Oh, yes, be, right? I did. I did. But still, it's like knowing what the result's going to be and then having it like slapped in your face where they're not even not even mentioning, you know, the candidate that you liked so much. It just, I don't know, put me in a foul mood. So, you know, I go to work and I'm stewing over that all day. And I thought, you know, I could run a campaign and probably get as many votes as he did. And he did being George Bush? No, 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 not George Bush. <laughs> Bad Nerick. Okay. I, uh, but Bad Nerick had party structure, ballot access, yes, yes, all of that stuff. And, and, I mean, and, I mean, I thought he was great. I really liked him. I've met and, Michael. He, yeah. he's, he's a nice guy. He's, and, and, he's, and he's very well versed in his ideas. My thing was that I thought he was such an excellent candidate, but that just, what just irritated me so bad that he just didn't show up on the radar screen. But you know that when you talk to friends and family and everything like that, that oh, yeah. they don't have, they're, they're, no. it's, it's red or blue, right? right. Apples or oranges. Right. And even really, apples and oranges isn't a good analogy for Republicans <laughs> and Democrats, right? You know, no. you know. It, it's, it's green apples <laughs> with worms or <laughs> reddish apples with worms. Right, right. <laughs> so, I mean, realistically, right. you know, you can't, how can you kind of come out of the blocks and say, I can right. do better than that? Well, no, it, it was party support on right, some right. Well, I guess in my mind, I wanted to start really slow. So that's what I did. Because I thought, you know, got four years, I can kind of start slow and just kind of gauge how things go. And um, so I started my little GeoCities page. 
which everybody seems to really have hated. But anyway, it, it did get some people to start noticing, and um, I got little stamps that I stamped dollar bills with, you know, and uh, made little cards that I'd leave in different places with the web address and everything so that people could see what it was about. And it did start just very, very slowly building. I kind of, uh, I was comparing it to a glacier, you know, kind of, you know, <laughs> okay. grows very slowly. And um, I guess then I turned on the heat lamp and killed the glacier, but, you know, still. Well, what kind of, you know, you've had some, uh, I know you have a, a, a couple friends at the Last Free Voice and some mm -hmm. of the blogs that get out there and do libertarian stuff and everything yeah. like that. Is that where you got most of or all of the types of responses? I mean, obviously you must have been getting some kind of feedback as to I, what you were doing. I would just have people write me randomly out of the blue a lot of times. People that uh, I had no idea, you know, who they were or anything. They'd just come on my website and then they'd write me. Uh, and got a lot of pretty good feedback from, from them and some of them I eventually sort of got to know. Um, there were people on some of the blogs that had sort of noticed me. Uh, it seemed like a lot of, I'm trying to think here exactly when. So you're dealing with three years period here. So. Yeah, mostly last summer was when things started really growing. That's when a lot of people seemed to notice me for the first time. And truthfully, I really don't know how they found me. I was in the process of a, a kind of a long vacation. We. Uh, took off originally for 10 days and ended up coming back six months later. And wow. <laughs> and so it was in the midst of all of this that all of a sudden people discovered me. So I really wasn't online or anything too much during that time, so I don't even know really how it happened. Well, uh, you, you, you present yourself on the website with a, you know, obviously as, as yourself, you right. know, but in this, you know, the reality is you've got long hair, you wear kind of a cowboy <laughs> hat, you have this Midwestern pioneer type yeah. of appeal to people. And you've got a hardcore message of liberty, right? Yeah. You don't mess around when it comes to your hate for government. You don't want anybody messing with your guns. Um, yeah. I noticed you don't take too much of a stance on the economics. You, I, I don't think we consider you an Aus Austrian mm -hmm. economic libertarian, uh, but you, you tend to be more off. you tend to be more rights-based libertarian yeah. and stuff like that. And that's got a kind of a gut appeal to people, right. right? I mean, and that's probably, you know, that just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. So you build up this whole grassroots thing, you get into the LP news, and then two months later you go, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it got. Uh, I just, I don't know, it just didn't feel right anymore. And I, I do think a lot of it came down to the FEC stuff. I had the paperwork sitting there on my desk, mm -hmm. all filled out for like two months. So you weren't, you weren't even agonizing over the fact that you had to physically do the work for the paperwork. Oh, no, because I'd already done that. You'd already, yeah. you already done yeah. the work. Okay. It, it was just the... I couldn't uh, even do that. I had to have uh, my wife do that stuff oh. because I, I would sit there and come up with a complete treaty as to why I shouldn't do this. And I knew <laughs> that it was better right. off in her hands just yeah. actually doing it. She'd ask right. me what I did or whatever I needed to do, and I'd she'd do it. Oh, yeah. But I couldn't even do the paperwork. Well, I, I had it all done. I had it in the envelope. The envelope was all addressed and everything. And I kept staring at it, and I just kept thinking, this just feels wrong. I, I just, I don't feel right about doing this. And, and I had my dad hanging, kind of hanging on the line because he had said that he would, uh, he would be my campaign manager and all this. And I kept saying, well, hold on, just, just wait. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here because it, I, I don't know. It's very hard for me to explain just the... The process that was going on in my head. I mean, it was like one moment. It's like, okay, I've gone this far. This is just one tiny little step. Just go ahead and do this, and then you know I can keep going. Did you come? Did you? Act, I, I realize the paperwork is in the FEC and everything like that. But what about the people that were like, yeah, I like Kent. Did you? Did you have some kind of a, a bond yes. with them? So yes, I did. And and that was. I would say that probably kept me going longer than I would have otherwise, okay. because I felt like I was, I don't know, I felt like I was really letting everybody down, and you know, I don't want to let them down, it's just kind of really, I, I want to, to uh, if people have gone 
out on the limb. And said nice things about me and said that they support me, you know, whatever. I just did, did not want to pull the rug out from them. But it just, I don't know. So hence the right-in candidacy and right. the continuation of the yeah. dog and everything right. along those lines. I mean, we still, I think the LP still only has 26 states that are full ballot access at the moment. So yeah. it's, it's theoretically possible in places like Oklahoma. I know Pennsylvania has horrible ballot access problems uh, right here. Um, but they may not have a, a presidential candidate on the ballot, right? Or somebody that's liberty-oriented or liberty-minded. I'm, I'm in Colorado, so I don't really care about Pennsylvania. So. You're in Colorado and so you're in? Uh, no, I, I'm still registered to vote there. Oh, oh okay. I, I, I do mail-in ballots. So. But you live in Pennsylvania. You oh, come across Pennsylvania, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you know, I'm in here in Pennsylvania with Ken and Anna Gall. I, you know, I had to stop through Pennsylvania to see. But, yeah. um, I think it's 100,000. strange setup and you know I'm sympathetic uh, you know I, I had gone through the pro whole process of the campaign and I got knocked off the ballot yeah. uh, by kind of the same crew that did a lot of hijinks down in Florida mm -hmm. during the Bush Gore thing which was somewhat flattering in my, in my <laughs> yeah. regard because they took notice of me and they bothered to, to, to come after me. Yeah, they, uh, they only whack the nail that's sticking up that's right? right that's right so I sympathize. Um, Would you consider something in the future? Maybe. I don't know yet. I I kind of have decided that maybe my uh, my niche is just to raise a stink. You know, say, say what I think, right. Uh, just really, um, I don't know, just keep screaming liberty. And whether anybody listens or not, that's their business. But, you know, it's there. And, uh, just, 